We are? Okay. All right, well, we're live on line two. Sweet. We're live okay. everywhere. We're live. We're live on all these <laughs> We're cameras. On the right we've now. been we've been we've been live on the other ones for a while. Just kind of like it's going to be great content. No, yeah. All your all your all your <laughs> awesome conversation that you had with me, that's going to go out. <laughs> uh, all the bad words that I say. Yeah. Well, it's not. Do I have to filter myself that much? By no, you don't have to filter yourself at all. I mean, this because, is you know, the beautiful part of this is. I say bad words. We just say what we want to say. It's it. We're, we're talking about you and your brand and everything that you're building and all that stuff. So we're going to go through all that. So if that's if that's you, that's you. Be you. I don't care. I'm, I want you I'm to be you. I'm apologetically me because I don't have time to remember who I was to you a week ago. I just have to, like... That's the best way because you don't have to worry about no. whether you're telling the truth or telling lies. No. You just tell the truth. You I be you and that's yeah, it. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't have time to figure out Everything you text who I'm supposed to be for you. I'm me, and if we work, then we work, and if we don't, we don't. <laughs> i got to finish this. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I finished this text right quick to an agent who needs a quick answer. Who needs... And if you're watching, you know who you are. I'm, I'm texting you right now. <laughs> about a pre approval. Mm. About a client. About a client. Income to qualify. Uh, I'm going to share some blank statements here for those who I can't document. Income to qualify. She just wanted to know. We're talking about bank statement type loans, but this person has the ability to go like traditional tax returns. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, if they go that way, can we get them a better loan? Right? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. yeah I mean, you only go bank statements if you can't document enough income. Gotcha. Right? I mean, there's some great bank statement loans out there, but I mean, no reason to use them if. So interest rates. Well, yeah, the interest rates um, are going to be. I mean, interest rates on bank statement loans can be anywhere. You know, five and five and a half to, I mean, they can go up to eight, nine, nine percent yeah, yeah. easily, right? It just depends on credit scores and how much money they want to put down. Mm -hmm. But um, if they have the ability to, to you know, to do a conventional, to type. Do a conventional loan with two years tax returns or one year tax returns for that matter, gotcha. they don't need two, they can do one, then. You prefer well, that? Oh over my God, I'm 100% going to recommend that because it's a lower rate. Gotcha. Over Alexa, off. Yes. She listened. She listened. She obeyed. If you guys, she wasn't listening a while ago. Like I tried to get <laughs> change songs, she all that so kind of rude. stuff. She was being rude. Uh, you were doing a better job listening to me <laughs> than what she was. <laughs> she oh was my rude. gosh. Okay, so we're live, Brandon. We're ready to roll. All right, on this jam session, Chauncey Fam stops by. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Hey guys, I am so happy. This is the 61st jam session. That we got. 61st You've jam done session. 61? 61 of these things. Awesome. You're my 61st guest. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, what this jam session is all about. Okay. I got I got things I want to talk to you about because you there's so much that you've done, so many places that you're going. I know that, and I want you to be able to share that with us this audience, Absolutely. right? Because in six months from now, three months from now, one month from now, somebody's gonna come, hopefully, this is what we go for. Somebody's gonna come in and say, dude. Thanks so much for hooking me over, Chauncey. It rocked. She yeah. did an awesome job. That's what this is for. So, guys, if you're looking for somebody, you're going to learn a lot about this lady right here. I know this camera over here. You know about her and how awesome she is. Hopefully, we're going to drop some nuggets where you find some things that you didn't know about her. And I know this camera over here. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find some people that need to know who you are. So, from a 30,000-foot view... Uh, give me a little bit, you know, give us give everybody a little bit about who you are. 30,000 foot view. We're going to get into some details, but the big am. picture. Um, I'm a realtor. Um, I am now the uh, a producing partner of a business entity uh, boutique brokerage here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I am unapologetically me. And that's just kind of how I've built my business is just kind of being myself, right. um, loving all things real estate, all things that come with the people and cultivating those those relationships in real estate. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like what you see is what you get. Like, <laughs> this is me. Unapologetically you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that, that, I mean, I love that because I think too many times we try to be somebody we're not. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and it could come from even the industries that we play in. Yes. Right. Yes. We service a lot of different clients. We're trying to be maybe that that next client that we're trying to go up to in sales price. We want to be more like them when Absolutely. the reality is 
we just need to be who we are and let them choose whether or not we're good enough for them. Exactly. Right? Because I can't exactly. worry about them. All exactly. I can worry about is myself. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of, um, you know, I, I think a lot of realtors, when they get into the business, they try to find their space. And so when I, I first got into the business, um, I understood you need to find a niche. So, you know, maybe you do historic homes or you do condos or you work with families or, um, and, and everyone has a niche within the market, but no one really has um, a niche that coins and brands themselves. Um, right. There are some cheesy ones out there. You know, I, I've seen some, some realtors just online that, you know, the puppy realtor or the, sure. yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, the animal loving, I'm the fashion but if they're, realtor. if they're being them, then that's them. That's them. Um, but so I just kind of came up with this idea that, I mean, my brand would just be just me. So I don't, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to do anything extra. Um, people will flock to me. My people will flock to me by simply being attracted to the fact that I am um, unapologetically me, honest, um, simple, and, and that was my approach. So you walked away from something pretty comfortable, Very right? Comfortable. A, a, a corporate job Very comfortable. to yes. get into this space. So I kind of want to start right out of the gate. I want to start getting into some things. So okay. now, how long ago was that? That was almost two years exactly. It was, it was uh, two years. Well, I, I, I started real estate in August of 2016 is when I passed my initial, my exam. Okay. Um, and by November 11th, so August 31st, passed my exam, November 11th, I walked away from the job. So it, I haven't wow. even, it hasn't even been two years since I actually walked away from my job, but it has been a little over two years since I started real estate. Guys, she's a rock star because I know numbers and I know I know you've done a great job in less than two years to get where you are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why did you get, decide to get into real estate, I guess, first off? Um, honestly, it was almost an accident. Um, hmm. I, I got into real estate because my husband and I inadvertently became flippers of, of our own homes. Okay. So we would buy a house. We yep. would, you know, decide to sell it. Um, you know, had a lot of equity in it. And we did that a couple of times. And through my experiences um, with doing it, I was not impressed at all with the realtors that we we're working with. And yeah. I ended up kind of taking those transactions and taking over. And so mm -hmm. I was coordinating everything with the title companies and with the lenders and with my buyer's lenders. You and were doing that as, I did that as, as the, the client, as right? The client. right yeah. I was the seller. I was selling my house, but I was talking to the title company and to their lender. And <laughs> I did all of that. And so uh, the lender that we'd always worked with said, Chauncey, you should look at getting your license. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get my license simply for us, right. for when I sell my property sure. to save money, whatever. Um, and so I bought a class, bought another class. Like it legit took me over a year to even take all the classes because it, it just, it wasn't on my radar. Yep. Um, and so got all the classes done, took the test. And my job that I had, my cushy job was uh, marketing. I was an account executive for a marketing firm. Yep. And so I understood kind of the ins and outs of marketing and what it takes to kind of build a business in the back end, the digital marketing, the print marketing. And so I think mm -hmm. it was just a natural progression for me to market myself once mm -hmm. I got my license. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty quickly, like, it just kind of took off because I marketed myself and created brand awareness and awareness around myself as an option and that was it. Did you did you find that there were people like discouraging you from leaving that career that oh, you yeah. had to get oh, into yeah. real estate? Oh, how yeah. did you how did and you I handle how did you handle that discouragement? I mean Okay, so anyone that <laughs> knows me knows that if they told me to go right, I go left. Period. Like like legit, my husband says, like, if I want to get you to do something, I just tell, tell you, you the, the opposite, opposite. Yeah, yeah, because then that's what you're going to do. And and I just do. I don't know why. I don't necessarily do it on purpose. That's just how it works. And so, um, yeah, I, I got a lot of kind of like, you're kind of crazy. We're leaving your job and your comfort to go and do this. Like, I know a lot of realtors and they sell like one or two houses a year. Yep. And um, I just kind of wanted to prove them wrong. And so I just kind of set out, got the license, started Branding myself, marketing myself, making the awareness, and I was gone from my job within two and a half, three months. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, what's, I mean, if you were to say like the one thing that set you apart and that has set you apart from the beginning, would that be your understanding and ability to market and build a brand and all that kind of stuff, yeah. or would it be something else? No, I, I think it would be that. Um, 
just my ability to market and build a brand, but then also my ability to connect with people. Um, I understood going into this business that like hmm. my motive behind getting into it once I figured out that, okay, I'm picking up steam, the, the enjoyment didn't come from just the commissions and, and building a business. The enjoyment for me really came from cultivating relationships and like meeting all of these different people and helping them out in these mm -hmm. different phases of their lives. So I think those two things. So the fact that I, I understood the marketing aspect and I was creative, which is something that a lot of realtors lack. They're sure. not creative at all. Um, so I had that and then I also had the, the people aspect. And so that kind of worked together and yeah, I think I, I, I love those two because I, I think we are both in a very people oriented business. I mean, we, we have to get belly to belly. We have to connect with people mm -hmm. if we don't or are not able to get belly to belly by doing it on the phone. A lot of our stuff is how do we get belly to belly over the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Because our, our, a lot of our, our, um, our clients, we, we just talk to and use video and all those kind of things. But in the real estate world, you do have luxury of being able to meet your clients and see your clients mm -hmm. and get to know your clients at a different level than what we do in our space. Now, the marketing side, obviously, you see what we do. I mean, it's and you, you're a lot in the, in the same space. I mean, marketing, bringing attention to your brand is important. There's a lot of people that do what we do, right? So how, how do you feel it, it's best to to bring attention to your brand? How do you stand out? Um, oh, that's a good one. Um, you, you've got to be okay with not following the pack, especially in Dallas right now. I, I can't remember the numbers. I just read an article um, and, and I actually was down at, at Trek and at TAR mm -hmm. uh, a week or two ago. And I think we're now up to like 188,000 license holders mm -hmm. in Texas right now between inspectors, appraisers, and, and realtors. And so, I mean, you throw a rock, you're going to hit someone that has a real estate license, yep. right? So the majority of them are going to, to follow a certain path. And I think those that um, have excelled and have really made a brand for themselves and captivated audiences have chosen to go a different way. And you have to be comfortable with that. And you have to be okay with being the center of attention that may be a totally different type of attention than what everyone else is getting. Yeah. Um, and so you, you just got to do things differently. So that, that's what I did when I started. Um, I looked at what everyone else was doing. Mm -hmm. I literally did the opposite. Like now I think we're seeing a lot of video and all of that, but two mm -hmm. years ago when I first started, like it wasn't a whole, whole lot of video out there. Mm -hmm. And I legit, when I, I first started, first started getting my leads, wherever I was, I stopped what I was doing at that moment. I shot a video on my iPhone and I would text it over to that lead. Mm -hmm. Hey John, how you doing? This is Chauncey Fam, Realtor Dallas Fort Worth area. It looks like you're interested in 123 Main Street over in mm -hmm. Dallas. Hey, give me a buzz when you get a minute. Let's chat. And immediately I would get responses. Yep. And so I kind of built my business on video. So when I first got in, everyone said you're supposed to send out postcards and door yeah, knock yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and circle letters. prospect and handwritten letters. And I've never done one of those things. And I mean, they work. I think anything Absolutely. works consistently, yep. um, but I just didn't do those. So I think, you know, to stand apart, you have to be comfortable with doing something different. You know, I, I do believe that most all things will work when there's consistency yeah. behind of what course. it is, whatever it is that you're picking. Like I, I'll have agents say, hey, we want to farm this neighborhood for the next three months. I'm like, you're wasting your money. <laughs> It takes, it takes three year. years, yeah. right, to farm something to at least gain a little bit of traction. Mm -hmm. So consistency is big. You're saying something I really believe in about getting comfortable, right? I, I think you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? I think that's where you're also we're in the same uh, alignment there, which is, you know, a lot of people aren't comfortable with video. They're not no, comfortable they're with not. the camera. They, they think they sound weird or they look weird or they don't, I mean, whatever it is. And you just have to, you know, get over it, right? If you're comfortable being you unapologetically, then at the end of the day, you're going to have a, a, a higher self-esteem. You're going to have uh, a different purpose when you put that camera in front of you to be able to communicate to your audience, right? Agreed. And I think that's important for people uh, to under to understand, mm -hmm. right? They have to be comfortable with doing something absolutely different. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's kind of what I built everything on is just um, doing something different yet being myself while doing it. Uh -huh. If that makes sense. It does. 
Um, I, I love the videos. We do that. I mean, Brandon will show you, like, I mean, we do videos all the time where I'm sitting here and I'll hold my phone up and I'm like, I'm doing a video to a client. Yeah. You know, and I think the, the texting, I mean, we use texts, we use emails, I and mean, we communicate all different ways. Mm -hmm. People like different types of communication. Absolutely. But the video text uh, piece just connects with that person on a different it level. Does. They get to see your emotion. Like, I'm excited that they've chosen, I'm, it's pure gratitude. I'm excited that they've chosen to work with me. Right. Or that entertain working with me. Right. I want them to see that excitement. Yes. Right? And you can't do that in a text. You can't do that in a text. LOL. You can't do that in an well, email. I mean, you can't, I mean, I mean <laughs> what am I going to do? I mean, I want them to see it, right? You can't do it in an email either. And how many right. people even read emails anymore? You know? Like, they just, they don't. Um, and so I just I wanted to make sure that I incorporated something uh, to put me in front of people when I first started and, and just let them know that I was an option and that I was a person and not a computer. Well, and to your point, like 188,000 um, licensed uh, agents, inspectors, you know, realtors, stuff like that in, in your market, right? I mean, you got to be different. And we have, we'll have that in, in mortgage space, plus we have all the non-licensed people, which is the banks, right? Mm. The bank LOs, gotcha. right? They don't have to have a license, but they still get to do business. I mean, how do we separate ourselves from mm -hmm. them, right? We start kind of looking at it the same way, and you have to be going at them through multiple Absolutely. mediums. Absolutely. Um, people are doing more video. They are. Right? One thing I found is they're not consistent no. with the videos. And, I, and I'm even guilty of that, um, especially in the summer, you know, busy season. I don't think I've put out a vlog in a couple of months. Um, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got, you know, some but content. Have, I've got some footage. You have some stuff that you, the reason why you, yeah, you have absolutely. it. So there's, there's a, I've got a strategy reason. and a purpose. Exactly. And, and there is a strategy and a purpose and, and, and it's going to shift and there will be more that comes out. But nonetheless, um, consistency definitely is a huge issue. I'll see someone, you know, pop a video out there or pop a post and then you don't see them again for two or three months. And the thing is that we just have to constantly um, make ourselves an option for people or else you won't get chosen. Right. I mean, that's that's it. That's it's mm -hmm. as simple as that. And realize their their attention also is in different places, right? Mm -hmm. Because like my wife, she doesn't like watching videos. Like, are you kidding me? Like all you do is videos. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, see, that's the thing. That's what people think. But the reality is, we, we, we put out blogs. I mean, so. we we do different things, podcasts, right? Okay. I mean, so you have to know where your audience wants you to be, and then you have to go. Go where they are. Go where they are mm -hmm. with in, in the right type of medium. So, I mean, we're 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 getting much better at all these different channels and diversifying, right? So you can take your video, like mm -hmm. what we do here, right? We have all these cameras. We take our video, we can strip out the video and just use the audio to to a podcast. Gotcha. You don't have to create a podcast. Just strip it out, put it, exactly. and you get your podcast. Then you can take the audio and convert it to written word. Right. Then and that's you, a blog. Now you have your blog, right? And so we, we're starting to get much smarter with how we're utilizing our content and distributing it out amongst all of our channels because not everybody wants to watch a video. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. it, it, it's been fun to, to see that. So, I mean, what, what characteristics, I think, do you feel um, are, are important to develop in getting into this, this business, your industry, and what you do for a living? Oh, it's so many. And I, I've, I've actually gone over this like in a vlog before. Like, don't get into real estate if you're not ready for these things. So, oh, awesome. Okay. Um, a couple that I can remember that I went over that just kind of stand out would be number one, business acumen. Hmm. I think first and foremost, I think a lot of people see the glitz and the glamour from some of the agents that are doing very well. I mean, you know, and, and they're looking at million dollar <laughs> listing on Bravo and, and they see the, the oh, heavy yeah. hitters, oh, yeah. you know, in Dallas. How or, easy that is. And hell, Bob, they even see the people that aren't selling anything but are pretending like they are. So let's Ooh. let's not forget that. So there's this illusion that's created around it. So they, they quit their jobs and they think, oh, I'm just going to go and like show some houses and like point out baseboards and then people are going to buy houses <laughs> and I'm going to make money. And um, what they don't understand is that you are running a business mm -hmm. like you are not an employee anymore mm -hmm. um, and no one is going to lay out a plan for you to be successful no matter how many programs are out there that you buy or how many coaches what worked for them may not necessarily work for you mm. and you have to understand that you are starting a business Your business yeah this is a business so you need to understand profit and loss mm -hmm. you need to understand 
you know, analyzing your data and where your leads coming from and, and the return on your investments and, um, you know, running lean with low overhead when you first start and, and um, you know, making a lot of money and, and capitalizing on your profits and then turning that and reinvesting in your business. Like, it is, it, it is beyond me how many people get into this business mm -hmm. and they think that literally someone's gonna hand you leads, mm -hmm. they're gonna hand you a roadmap, mm -hmm. they're gonna tell you exactly what you need to do, they're gonna give you all of this training that tells you exactly how to be perfect at it, mm -hmm. when they don't understand, like this is no different than starting a clothing store. Mm -hmm. No one is gonna tell you where to get your inventory, what type of clothes to sell, how to merchandise, where you should put your storefront, how you need to advertise it. No one tells you all of that. Sure. So you've gotta have some business acumen first and foremost okay. um, when jumping into the business. I think, I think that is the one thing that we're missing. We have a lot of employees that are jumping into entrepreneurship that mm -hmm. don't understand or even want to be a part of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. That's the biggest one. So that's first and foremost. Sorry, that's my soapbox. I no, I, I, I love it. It's 100% it's accurate. It's 100% accurate. <laughs> it it accurate. bugs the hell out of me. Right. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is you've got to be a people person. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in the process now of, of building a brokerage. And so I'm, I'm wanting to um, recruit agents. And, and so what I've been doing with agents that I speak with is I have one interview question. And I have one thing that I want them to do. And so in a public place, I ask, go and get a phone number. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's your interview. Okay. And you would be surprised at how many people freak out when I say that. If we're in a Starbucks and we start talking and I'm like, look, you know, I, I would love for you to come aboard, but I, I need for you to do one thing for me. Next five minutes, go and get a phone number. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to do that? What am I supposed to, what do you expect for me to do? What? So they don't understand that being in this business, you got to talk to people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to put yourself that, out there. Right. You got to remove that fear. You've got to remove a fear because if you can't take the first step, which is going out and getting to meet people and make an effort to exchange contact information, how the hell are you going to build a business and make money? Mm -hmm. So I would say being a people person and, and not having a fear of talking to people and reaching out to people, making connections, yep. um, that would be number two. Okay. So, um, and then number three is get creative. Um, and, and be able to step outside of the box. And so, um, especially in real estate, we've um, been made to believe that everything is kind of like in a box, right? Mm -hmm. So the way you get leads and the way you lead generate. And, and so you, you got a cold call, you got to make 200 cold calls a day and you got to go and knock on a hundred doors a week and you got to do open houses and knock on doors before the open houses. And so all of these things are very daunting tasks and like they suck. Mm -hmm. Who really just wants to sit and make 200 calls a day? And so if you don't really want to and you're not good at it, then be okay with getting creative on how you're going to get leads. I love that. Um, yeah. And so creativity and, and kind of thinking outside of the box um, is, is another really big one. So those are my big three. Business acumen, being creative, um, and what was the other one? Um, being, no, no, no. What's business that? acumen. Business acumen. Um, being creative. Being creative. And um, how do we just blank uh, out? Being able to talk to people. Yes, talk oh to people. Oh my gosh. That's the biggest See, point. I'm listening, guys. I promise <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> being able to talk to being people. Being able to talk to people. What the hell? Yeah, so those are the third. Those I love that. Three. Well, I mean, and, and all three of those are, are so important. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, every single one of those. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I could bring three different ones. Like I have, I have you know, empathy energy and enthusiasm i like that right because you have to i mean we have to be, we have to be able to get on the same side as the person that we're working with right, right? you won't want to be if you sit at a table and you're across from somebody you already put yourself the walls up and you're negotiating and that's right. not a good place to be for anyone you always have to get on the same side to understand where they are in life what they're going through what their goals are yes how do we help them reach what they need mm -hmm. to reach Right, and so that's a big part of, of what you talk about, people, right? It's the big part of being able to connect with people. Mm -hmm. The energy piece, every day we gotta bring so much energy yeah. because this business is a grind. Mm -hmm. It's a huge grind and you gotta talk to, you know, a hundred people, you gotta talk to a thousand people, you gotta get 12, 12 potential clients to actually get one client. I mean, you, right. you just gotta go through and you're gonna have you're going to have failing forward moments in this business right. that you, you have, have to be, be able okay to, with. yeah, you have to be okay with it and accept it. And so energy to be able to bring it every day 
is important. I think my last one from an enthusiasm standpoint is just that, man, I want positive people around me. I want people that are excited about life, excited about being here mm -hmm. every single day. And that is contagious. And people hear that on the other end of the phone, right? Because much like you said, and I love that interview question because I did the same thing with people here, yeah. which is this, you told them to go get a phone number. Well, when I hire someone, I want to find out, phone skills are important. I want to find out how quickly they can get on a call with somebody that doesn't know us to be able to engage and connect with them to get things like social security numbers, right? right? The <laughs> biggest thing ever. How, how can you get that? How do you get and that? And the only way you're able to get it is to take empathy and enthusiasm and energy. And put it all together. Put it all together so that you gain trust from that individual right. just like that. Mm -hmm. So they feel comfortable giving it to you. Right. Right? I mean, that, that it's, it's so important. So you're building this, this brokerage. Mm -hmm. Okay? That takes some time away from what you're doing. Yes. How, how have you gone about delegating some things and how important is delegation uh, to what you do? I'm working on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great question then. <laughs> I'm a control freak, Bob. Um, and so I am definitely working on the delegation piece because right now I'm trying to do all of it and mm -hmm. I've been trying to do all of it. And, and I think that's, that's a, a, a huge lesson in leadership that I'm kind of going through right now is understanding, um, that there comes a point in your business when you really want to hit growth that you have to be okay with delegating and putting the right people in the right places. The right people, the right systems. Mm -hmm. And then what I found is you have to work twice as hard in the, how you communicate mm -hmm. to the pe to not your people you're delegating to, but to your client that just got delegated to somebody else gotcha. because they don't want to be delegated or yeah. they don't know right. or they, they feel like they're getting like passed, passed off, off. Yeah. and the reality is that's not the case yeah. whatsoever you know that the time that you're going to give them is going to be at the highest and best use of your time and what they need right. and that's why they come to you and everything else can be delegated to somebody that maybe even has a better skill set at that than even what you do Absolutely. right so it's just how you go about communicating that, I think, to the other person is is huge. I've had to learn that. It's so Cause hard. Because they, they, get, they get referred to Bob Mortgage. Yeah. And then they, they don't talk to Bob. Well, they'll get, they they'll may, get five, they may yeah. get five to ten minutes yeah. with me, but that five to ten minutes is going to be the best five to ten minutes, which is the most valuable piece, right. I think, around structure, rates, cost, everything else. I mean, th honestly, my team's better at it than I am. Yeah, right. But that five to ten minutes... Is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's it's finding balance between that and, and just making sure that I set it up properly with because we use videos or if I'm having a call with them, I'll set it up that way so they don't feel exactly because right? like we know what this is. Off. We're in a feel and experience business. Yes. That's that's really what what we do, right? So how how are you planning to expand? The business. I mean, where wh how do you expand? Where are you expanding to? What are you looking for? So I've got big plans, Bob. Big plans. <laughs> that was a, that was such a loaded question. I know, um, but that's, so, that's the reason why you haven't been vlogging right now. You got all these <laughs> plans and strategy and put it together. I know something big's about to happen, so let's talk about it. So one thing that we haven't formally announced yet, um, because okay, so so the brokerage and, and who we like to target, it just tends to lean toward millennials, and I just uh -huh. think that's because of our use of video and social media platforms sure. and things like that, um, and so. That being said, to kind of dial in a little bit more and get them more engaged, um, what are most of them doing right now or before they even purchase a home? They're leasing, They're right? Leasing. So the, the millennial um, is what now? The, the majority of the market share, so 50 to 60% mm -hmm. of our market share now is millennials yep. that, are, that are coming in. They're not necessarily selling houses, they're buying their first house. So mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of tackle that, um, but, but how do I reach them? And so that's through leasing. Right. And yep. so um, I have a team of apartment locators under the brokerage. So Lux Locators Group, Christy Berryhill. She runs an yep. awesome, awesome outfit. Um, very popular. A lot of people like to use sure. them for apartment yep. locating because they give you a free move or um, you know a $100 gift card when you use them uh, to locate your apartment. And so I'm really kind of dialing into that space 
um, with her and, and making that not only an option for clients that come to us. So we're a one-stop shop. So you need an apartment, have an apartment locator. Gotcha. They'll find you a place um, there. If you need to lease a house, got someone that can help you with that. When you're ready to buy a house, then we've taught you everything that you need to know to transition into the actual sale um, mm -hmm. of the property. And then, you know, I think even on the agent side, agents that are more intimidated once they get their license to get started and just jump, you know, two feet into sales, um, now they also have an option with joining the sure. brokerage of doing apartment locating and kind of getting their feet wet and having some income come in while they are building the sales business. Well, and I think it's important. I mean, you know, there's not a successful business, I don't think, that can run just on one channel or no, one channel alone. absolutely. Right, you have absolutely. to have multiple channels because you serve multiple types of clients. Right. And like, I want to make sure I have all the right types of loan products for all the people. If I just said all I do is conventional 20% down with people that have 720 plus credit scores. Then you're going to miss out on <laughs> a lot of people. We're going to miss out on like 95% <laughs> of the population. Right. Right. So, you know, you got to be able to have all types of loan products, just like you have to have all types of ways to service the client. Leasing, buying, investors, all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. Yes. So what do you think was the biggest mistake you've made so far? Oh, you asked some loaded questions. Uh, Were yeah. you a journalist in a past life? I, no, I, well, <laughs> no. I, uh, no, I just, I don't know. I just like questions because I learn. I mean, honestly, I, I listen to these over and over again. I learn from my guest as well because yeah. I want to know, because we're in the same space. We're in the same business. We, we're entrepreneurs, right? We have the same struggles. You, we talked about video, guys, for like 15 minutes before we went on air because I know how savvy you are in the in video world you got to learn a little bit from me and yeah. i'm learning a little bit from you so i mean i think that's that's why i like asking questions yeah i don't know well that was a good one um what's the biggest mistake that i've made um hell i got too many to count <laughs> <laughs> i would say a big one is probably not seeking out help and um, delegating and, and getting an assistant earlier Wow. sooner um, because that would have freed up and like I said I'm a, I'm a control freak so I want to do all of it mm -hmm. I want to you know prospect I want to get clients I want to be in front of them I want to hold their hand through their entire transaction I want to do all of the paperwork mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to do everything mm -hmm. and so I can't I can't anymore mm -mm. and and I think understanding that and being okay with saying I can't um, and, and not over committing myself because when trying to do 15 things at once, that tends to happen. Um, I think that's a huge mistake that I've made. I, I probably should have hired yeah. an assistant a year ago. So I've been in this business for 22 years. Mm -hmm. I made the same mistake. <laughs> I just learned from it a long time ago mm -hmm. because been in it much longer. The same thing, I'm a control guy, Yeah. right? If it's gonna get done right, it's gonna be because of me. Right. Yeah, that's not the case. <laughs> Trust me, guys. Because well, then you won't even right. make it to it, right? No, uh -uh, because I got like four billion things in my mind and everything's coming out. It's not only about today. It's, it's about It's about tomorrow and the future and, all, I mean, all this stuff. Yeah. And so, I, and I wasn't smart enough to figure it out. I had my team come to me and say, hey, Bob, this is like, you know, <laughs> two years into the business. They're like, hey, Bob, you know, you're good at this stuff, but you're better at just building the process and then, marketing so can you just get out of our way and let us and do let what us we're do supposed it. to do and i'm like really and like yeah if you want to meet with us and hold us accountable and all that kind of stuff we're fine with that but just get, get out of the business and i'm like I, I, at first i was like really like hurt <laughs> by it and I, I had to start thinking i'm like well you know what maybe they are pretty smart yeah, so yeah. we did it and then you know what mm -hmm. business took off i got more of my life back and I was actually better with my clients. Yeah. They, I was so intentional with that five to 10 minutes that they were like, oh my God, this is amazing. You're so thoughtful. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. And I was actually working less with every client, but our experience and better. what the client was getting was so much better because yeah. they were taking that on. And so as the business grew, then it's just understanding then how to put people into different lanes right we could do it with only two people now we have to have 10 or 12 people right and so how do you put those people into those lanes and let them specialize in it mm -hmm. and so now we get we have to get really defined on the lane and so that's just stuff i've had to kind of grow into but i, I definitely made a yeah a similar 
a similar uh, learning opportunity. Yes. Not a mistake, but a learning yes. opportunity. Yes, learning opportunity, number there. one. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody's getting into your business, because mm -hmm. you're talking about growing and hiring, right? There's people out there that may be listening yes. that want to get into this business. So what's the blueprint you'd give them to, to get in? That there isn't a blueprint, number one. Okay. <clears throat> they need to understand um, and have the expectation that no one can hand you the blueprint to being successful in your business. <clears throat> Simply because you function totally different than they function. So there are lots of books out there. Mm -hmm. There are lots of supposed roadmaps. There are lots of business coaches. Sure. There are mm -hmm. lots of real estate coaches. And they give very valuable information. I'm not discounting any of that sure. information. The problem is, is that if you take, if I take Bob's Problem is they're not selling real estate. No, well, that's that's the biggest they're, problem. They're 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 providing mentorship or they're exactly. providing they're providing that's um, their business. Which I, guys, and trust me, there's some coaches probably listening. I love you guys, but <laughs> look, I've run a company before. Yeah. As a CEO of a company, I could find less loan officers that would actually listen to me as a CEO because they're like, you're not walking in my shoes today. Exactly. You're up here in exactly. the ivory tower telling me what to do. Exactly. You're not doing it yourself. That that is a huge huge issue. But again, comes that expectation that people think someone is going to give them a roadmap to building their own business. Mm -hmm. And like no one, that's, that's like asking someone to give you a roadmap to having a good life. Like my life Love that. is gonna be totally different and what makes me happy is gonna be totally different than Bob's. Mm -hmm. So I can do everything that you've done in life that made you the happiest man ever and I could be miserable mm -hmm. and, and, and not have a good life. And that's the same concept that applies to business. So I would say people, um, getting their licenses and, and here was an analogy that that i like to use with new agents is when you get your license it's equivalent to you deciding that you want to open a clothing store and you've rented a storefront that's all you've done okay so you have your your real estate license it's just like you've rented a storefront now if you have this clothing store and you've rented a storefront no one knows what type of clothes you sell mm -hmm. they don't know the name of your business you don't know where you're going to get inventory from. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know how much that inventory is going to cost and what your markup is going to be on it. You've got to figure out all of these things. Mm -hmm. Same concept goes with being a realtor. Most people will have you believe that once you get your license, oh, you just sell to friends and family. That's no different than starting this clothing store and selling all the clothes out of your closet. Right. Literally and figuratively, your ass is going to be naked because mm -hmm. you're gonna eventually run out of stuff in your closet to sell to other people, right? Yep. So you've yep. gotta figure out where to get that inventory, um, how you're going to do that, how you can do that on the cheap, because right now you don't have any money coming in. So all of this is gonna tie back into business acumen. So I, I think I would say um, a big thing that you need to do is read up on running a business while you're studying real estate. Mm -hmm. Real estate's a small part of it. Mm -hmm. um, learning real estate, understanding contracts, all of that's easy. That's the easy part. Your broker, sure. a trainer, they can, they can teach you that. Yep. No one can teach you how to build and cultivate lasting relationships with people, have those people actually feel you and you actually feel them. Mm -hmm. And no one can teach you how to run a business the way that it's going to work for you. And so I think those are things that people need to focus on while they're studying and, and getting their real estate license before they get into the business, um, because those are things that, that you can't necessarily be taught from a book. Yeah. Um, is, is business acumen, understanding how to build that business and building relationships with people. Yeah. I mean, the people. So there, there is no roadmap, man. It's just it's just not. If it wasn't, we'd all be rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be selling as much as some of these other people out here. I'm right. not. Well, you know, I, I, I believe that, you know, they, they have to be in the right mindset. I mean, it, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's not easy, guys. It, it, it's, it's hard, but it provides, it can provide you a lifestyle that you choose. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to necessarily be making millions of dollars a year, but it could be making enough money where it means you have a different quality of life. Absolutely. That you have a different level of impact. Mm -hmm. um, and so to your point, it, it's, it's, it, it provides them the opportunity to have their best life. Yes. Right? But they need to be in the right frame of mind
because it's not easy, regardless if you want to make, I mean, the average agent out there probably makes $32,000 a year. I mean, I mean, seriously, it blows my mind, <laughs> but that's because, that's because there's a lot of people that don't really do this full time, that don't commit to yeah. this industry. So you have to have the right mindset to, to commit to something full time, to understand the business side of it, which is one, I got to figure out how to make a dollar. And then I got to figure out how to make $2 then I can maybe turn that into $5, right? And so on and so forth. And that comes with the understanding of, there's a lot of people, so how do I get my brand out there? Mm -hmm. How do I market myself, stand out, be unique, be memorable, right? That's what marketing it is, is being memorable. And so, you know, I just, I find that that's why a lot of people struggle and maybe why a lot of people fail. I mean, I don't know what, what you see in your own space. Why do most agents fail in this business after, six months to a year i mean that's a that's a that that's what we see i think it's because of mindset and expectations when they get into the business it's it's just not what it's presented as the perception i think of of getting into the business versus when you get into it two totally different things right um and and i just don't think that a lot of people are prepared for that to understand that it's it's a grind mm -hmm. um and you've got to understand that going into it and they don't I yeah, mean, that, that's it. It's just mindset. Mm -hmm. It's just expectation. You got any questions on your Facebook page? I don't have any questions on here yet. Oh, come just, on, guys. What's just up? Just people just... Uh, oh, they're just... I see all the comments flying yeah, in. Like, oh, so Chauncey are, is wonderful. Like, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll stop it some more. Stop I'll it some stop more. stop it some more. So let me ask you. So if, if they're an agent uh -huh. or they're thinking about becoming an agent, so either one, an agent or thinking about becoming an agent, how do they get a hold of you to, uh, to learn about your group and what you're doing and how you can impact their life with this industry? Um, how do they get a hold of you? First thing that, well, I mean, how they get a hold of me is you can call me. I'll put my phone oh, number out there on the intranets. Whatever you want, I don't know. 214-680-8583. Um, put your website out there, whatever <laughs> you want to do, man. Um, so it's Family Realty Group, so www.familyrealtygroup.com. Um, also, you can go to YouTube and look up Chauncey the Realtor and got vlogs, quick tips, um, lots of different stuff so you can get a feel for my personality. I'm on Instagram as estate underscore chick underscore real. So just check me out on social media platforms. My information is, is out there. Well, um, we also have guys, if you go to Bob Mortgage and you, and you watch this um, um, thing on, on, on my page on Facebook or wherever, we ha have all your digits and everything. Yeah. I've already put you out there on, on the internet. Oh, thank you. That, that thing called the internet. The internet. The, the thing that Al Gore created. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's all out there for you, for people to, <laughs> to watch and see. Oh, that's fun. But you know. Um, yeah, what else? What else is going on? Nothing, man. Just, just like I said, I'm, I'm actively now recruiting and kind of talking to agents and, and looking to get the right people in the right place because I'm, I'm at the point of, of the business and the brokerage where, you know, it's the foundation. And so it's it's putting you gotta get the right people. Gotta get the right, the right people. With the foundation. So it's, the foundation is the invisible part of the business that you know no one sees, but but it is what builds it. And so um, just trying to take my time, make sure I'm not scaling up too quickly, um, mm -hmm. and putting the right people in the right places, and staying true to the brand. And everybody out there is looking to buy or sell. They can still get a hold of you using right. the same digits, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. So, same digits, same website, same yes. IG channel. Yeah. All that stuff, right? Absolutely. Well, I know how hard you hustle. I've watched it, okay, I've watched it for a while. My wife, my Bob, you gotta get Chauncey in here. You guys are so connected. You guys know what you guys are doing from a, from a marketing standpoint. Um, you know, I, I like to learn. I like to watch and follow and see kind of what you're doing, how I can, you know, maybe take some of that. It's, we call it swipe and adapt, right? right? <laughs> um, I, I'm out there, swipe and adapt, whatever I do. But, um, you know, it, it's fun to watch similar people that, that hustle. Mm -hmm. um, I know you wake up every day much like I do with your back against the wall knowing you have to earn it. Yep. Um, that's probably something I've, I've learned the most in this business is it doesn't matter where you are, you still have a long way to fall. Oh yeah. And having been pretty high and also fallen pretty low, mm -hmm. I know that every day I have to get up and work like I had got nothing. Absolutely. Like everybody's trying to steal it from me. Yeah. And I got to earn it. Yeah. Right? I mean, and, and so that that is probably like my biggest 
piece of advice to whether it's real estate or it's mortgage or just really in any industry, if you're in sales, um, you've got to wake up every day and, and feel like you're going to lose everything and you've got to earn it. Because once you start taking it for granted and you're like, well, I, I'm, I'm insulated, I'm so good, but I got no, all this. No, no. It, it, it goes away yeah. like that. And I think that you, you know, you're asking why do so many agents fail? That's a lot of pressure. Uh -huh. um, and I think yep. they see that once they get in, you know, that is a lot of pressure. Um, and it takes a certain type of person and mindset to be okay with having to be on all the time. And, and But you know what? If you really want to be in this business, you have to. And I think it's, for me, it's, it's everything I wanted. I wanted to remove everything off of me that somebody else controlled. Oh, yeah. And I wanted it put squarely on my shoulders. Absolutely. And that level of accountability to yourself. Yeah allows you to to accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish now granted Absolutely. you may not accomplish everything and those are failing forward opportunities but it's all on you and so when you stop blaming other people mm -hmm. I, I, the excuses and all this crap it just, I'm, i get over all that going i talk to people oh the industry is this there's too many people there's this. whatever man you, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm out i'm out you know no. what you are the reason a absolutely only you that's absolutely. it there's nobody else but it's so refreshing mm -hmm. to know that you know what if it's meant to be it's, it's gonna know, be it's gonna be and okay. and i like having that uh plus the man upstairs helps yeah right <laughs> that helps you, get, you gotta have something so listen on. it was awesome i it certainly was. appreciate it you rock as Thank always you. i knew this was going to be great hopefully you guys got so much out of this i think you dropped some great nuggets some wisdom to help to help agents that are looking to get in the business that are in the business right now i don't care if they're 22 years in the business they got some good stuff from you um, if you're looking to buy or sell give her a phone call check her out on our website thanks so much for joining give me your eyes and your ears go make it a great day for somebody take care